Welcome everyone to this morning's core coffee chat. Today we're trying a new experiment, a pop-up career fair, and we're featuring representatives from the Community Action Board, Santa Cruz Community Ventures, and Second Harvest Food Bank, all of whom are core steering committee members and have been active participants all along. So we're really pleased to bring this to you today. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to go over some Zoom instructions right out of the gate. But first, we'll probably say a quick hello. So let me stop my screen share for just a second and have us all wave at each other. Nice to see everyone. I also wanted to introduce our team, um, Stella Lauerman, the Stellar Stella is interpreting live on the Spanish channel, which I'll explain in just a moment. And Gisela Carrasco is translating all of your chats into English or Spanish as needed. So please feel free to communicate in whatever language is most comfortable for you and similarly to listen in the language that's most comfortable for you. Okay, let's dive in. For those of you who may not be familiar, we wanted to give you a quick overview of core investments. The acronym CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. It's both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in our county, and it does so emphasizing a results-based or collective impact approach to respond to numerous community needs. Our mission and vision that you see here are the product of input from a wide variety of community meetings, input from people like yourselves, local service organizations, philanthropy, and public agencies. And all of this work has really emphasized the role of equity at the center, which you see in the, in the graphic there, that's a word cloud from one of our earliest meetings. We've identified eight core conditions for health and well-being, and these are opportunities to achieve equitable health and well-being in our county. By equitable health and well-being, we mean that the opportunities to thrive are not dictated or predicted by where you live, your zip code, by your race or ethnicity, your age, your language, your immigration status, um, your, your gender um, or sexual orientation. So the idea is that no matter where you live, who you are, what you look like, um, where you've gone to school, that you can enjoy these core conditions of health and well-being in our county, and that's what we're working towards. You see equity at the center of this diagram because it's so central to this work. It's important to recognize that these core conditions are not equitably achieved currently, and so we want to work towards making the disparities and gaps uh, to lessen those and to close those as we move along. So you'll hear from three organizations today that in their own ways are all working to do that. I also wanna emphasize the connected lines, the dotted lines across all of these core conditions because we know more and more that you can't achieve health and wellness, for example, without having economic security and mobility. In order to have a thriving family, you have to live in a safe and just environment. You need safe and affordable housing and shelter to feel safe and confident in your life. So all of these things are connected to each other and all of them are connected to the central role of equity. The Core Institute for Innovation and Impact is the umbrella for the wide variety of training and technical assistance events that we offer through Core, like this chat today. We've offered some core conversations that are longer, more in-depth explorations of different topics, as well as chats like this one. And today is a new idea for us to try to do this pop-up job fair. We are always interested in trying new things and trying to meet different needs that people bring to us through core. But overall, the idea behind the Core Institute is to bring a variety of tools and skills that build capacity locally to do the kinds of things that you see listed here on this slide. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to hear from these three organizations and to introduce them and, and explain the format that we're gonna to use today, I'm gonna to turn it back over to Nicole Young, the co-facilitator of Core. Great, thanks, Nicole. And it's 
Nice to see everybody uh, joining us today and great to see that some of you are seeking out job opportunities. So hopefully you'll hear something promising today. And I know others of you are also uh, here to learn and also have job op opportunities at your agencies that you wanna share. And so we're gonna try to make room for all of that today. The way that we're planning to move through this and try out this career fair is we'll hear from each of the agencies one at a time, starting with uh, Jesusita Alcorcha from Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County. Um, and so Jesusita will start with, uh, we'll, uh, she'll have up to 10 minutes to talk about uh, CAB as an agency, the job openings, and then we'll take about three minutes of questions and answers for Jesusita before we move on to Maria Cadenas from Santa Cruz Community Ventures. Do the same thing. Maria will have up to 10 minutes to present. We'll do a little Q&A after that. And then we'll hear from Mary Casey uh, representing Second Harvest Food Bank today. Same thing, 10 minute presentation, three minutes of Q&A. And then we're hoping that leaves us some time at the end for everybody else. If you have other job openings that you know of from in your agencies or that you're also aware of that you'd like to share uh, in the chat or, uh, or out loud, we'll make room for that. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions for the presenters throughout um, the session in the chat and we'll try to help, Nicole and I will try to help keep an eye on that and so we can feed those questions to them uh, and hope everyone gets all the information they need out of today. So we're looking forward to this format. We think it'll be uh, informative and interesting and uh, grateful to Jesusita and Maria and Mary for helping us uh, try out this, this format. Uh, these are three wonderful nonprofits that um, anybody would be lucky to work at. So Jesusita, we have um, a slide for you and we can show it while you go ahead and introduce uh, your organization. And then I know you have several job descriptions that you wanna review that we can share as well. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Jesusita Alcorcha from the Community Action Board. I work as the coordinator for the Links to Work program, which is part of the Alcance program, which is one section of uh, the CAB uh, services that we provide. I wanted actually to start by saying that our mission is to partner with the community to eliminate poverty and create social change through advocacy and essential services. So in all of these positions, uh, we want people to feel and have that kind of passion. Um, also, I did wanna, before I get started, Hannah sent me some directions on how she wants to receive resumes. Um, so please know that for anyone interested in interviewing for a position, we're requiring, requiring them to fill out or drop off an application in person before the Zoom interview. And so um, we want to make sure that the people are serious about interviewing and also want to meet them in person before we give them the job offer. And um, the interviewing will actually be a Zoom interview just as we go through that. We have several positions available. Um, we continue to grow. I, uh, we just continue to grow programs and we move programs around, kind of change things around a bit. So I'll go, go ahead and get started. Our first job is a case manager employment placement specialist. This is with uh, the day worker center in Santa Cruz. And it's a position that is 35 to 37 and a half hours a week. It pays 21 to $23 an hour to start. There are benefits, awesome benefits by the way, um, that we offer. It's going to be working out of our day worker center in, um, in Santa Cruz. The position is actually going to be working with adults in substance abuse recovery and their families to build job readiness skills and competency in obtaining and retaining employment uh, by using strength-based approaches and methods. This person will be uh, conducting workshops, will be doing reporting, uh, will be meeting with people across the community. We're really looking for somebody who can work with diverse populations we would like them to be bilingual and biliterate if possible and have a strong knowledge of the resources in Santa Cruz County. Um, they must be computer literate. Um, 
And again, they need to be bilingual or biliterate in English and Spanish for this position. Another job that we have available uh, as well is gonna be an administrative and data entry assistant. This one's gonna be located in Watsonville. It pays, uh, it's for 35 to 40 hours a week. And so your working hours on this job, it's important to note, are gonna be about 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. every single day, Monday through Friday. It pays 20 to $21 an hour to start. Uh, again, we have a full range of medical um, and uh, packages and dental packages. So again, you're asked to submit your resume and cover letter to hr at cabinc.org. Um, the position is open on Indeed. You can apply through that venue as well. Our, uh, this is part of the Alcance program. So you'll be working, uh, the day worker center reports to Alcance and um, well, no, actually, I'm sorry. This one is actually with Luna and Sol, I'm sorry. And you'll be working with predominantly uh, Latinx youth, predominantly males age 12 to 17, at risk of justice system involvement. And so this one will be really working with teenagers and you will be providing the administrative support to that, to that group. They will be asking you to do a lot of data entry. Uh, you must be proficient in Excel and PowerPoint and all of the Microsoft Office products. Um, you will be doing keeping a database that will be used on a regular basis to keep up with the work that we're doing in that project. The funding for this program is, uh, is currently funded for a two-year grant, just so you know. They do want someone um, bilingual, biliterate, able to speak, read, and write English and Spanish and it's required that they be someone bicultural. It uh, requires an AA degree or uh, two plus years of administrative data collection analysis or related experience. And for all of our positions, we do require a valid driver's license and insurance for that person, just so you have that information. Another position we have available is through our day worker center this one is called an Employer Engagement Day Labor Outreach Specialist. The position's hours are 37 and a half hours a week. The uh, work is on Tuesdays through Saturdays, so you'll be off on Sunday and Monday. And this one pays 21 to $22 an hour. Again, we have a full range of medical plans. And one of the things I do want to say at CAB that we do have that I love is that we have 24 days of annual leave and 12 paid holidays. So it seems like we're always needing to take a day off. Not that I mind, but you know, there are lots of days off if, if um, I think that's always a bonus. Um, the employer engagement day labor outreach specialists goal is to engage employers to support the hiring of day laborers who are not able to secure traditional employment and increase day labor membership by outreaching to day laborers in identified corners. The Day Worker Center in Santa Cruz County facilitates the hiring of reliable screened day workers on a variety of tasks, including gardening, house cleaning moves, painting, hauling, debris, cleanouts, et cetera. Um, the office hours are, the public office hours are 7.30 to 2 p.m. Tuesdays through Saturdays but outreach and engagement work will take place throughout Santa Cruz County. Oh, let me see, I'm just sorry. Um, for this one, it's need a basic knowledge of job readiness, employment safety practices, employment related issues, strong knowledge of Santa Cruz County, uh, to be able to effectively work with um, a variety of economic and cultural backgrounds. Um, we would like someone who's trauma-informed care knowledge and ability to practice and access available self-care and wellness to avoid and minimize burnout. Um, we need someone who's able to work well under time constraints and have multiple priorities to meet deadlines and ability to work flexible schedule, including Saturdays on a consistent basis and occasional evenings. This one again is biliteral, uh, bilingual English-Spanish required. 
experience with computers, knowledge of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, outreach and education experience preferred, and again, a California, valid California driver's license and a good driving record, as well as have your own insurance. Hey, Susita, can I jump in for a moment? Yes. Just want to give you a quick time check that um, you have about two minutes left for your okay. segment. And so I know you have a number of other job descriptions. Are there maybe one or two that you want to highlight? And, and we have shared the link um, okay. so that if, I, if people want to look at each specific job description, they have access to those. Uh, these others are, are actually much shorter. Um, the next one is the uh, an accounting and payroll clerk in our fiscal department. It will be located on in Watsonville. The uh, salary it's forty hours a week and pays twenty to twenty one dollars an hour. That's the next one. And then we um, we have a trilingual COVID focused education and outreach specialist seeking Mexico and Tiki speakers. So this one is going to be thirty to uh, forty hours a week or twenty four dollars an hour. And then the last one is a front office coordinator with our Santa Cruz County Immigration Project. It's 40 hours a week from 20 to $22 an hour. Uh, and again, it's uh, the same way to submit your, your information. So those are all of our positions currently. And I'd, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Jesusita about the job openings at CAB? Any of the requirements or the specific programs or job duties? And thank you, Nicole, for posting those jobs um, so that everybody has a copy. Yeah, you're welcome. And Jesusita, do you, um, I'm gonna ask you, like, what is your, I guess, favorite thing about working for CAB? Like, what in your mind, what makes it a great place to work? I have to tell you, and this is honest, not because I work there, but this is one of my favorite of all places that I've ever worked. There is so much passion, compassion, teamwork, camaraderie at, at um, CAB. Um, they honor your space. They, If you need to take time off, if you need to take time off to just breathe, it's that kind of an organization. The passion that we give out in the world, it's, it's so intense. So we do need the time to just catch our breath sometimes and just be with the organization. Um, and they're wonderful, completely supportive. I've never had so much fun uh, working at a place where they pay me to actually have fun with people all the time. It's intense, but it's, it's a great, great place to work. You, you'll love it. Thank you for that, Jesusita. And I know just, you know, from what I know about CAB and thinking about that graphic that Nicole Lezen, you know, showed a little while ago about the core conditions for health and well-being that CAB really, you know, through its various programs really touches on, I think, all of those. Uh, and so I think that's one of the things that's really um, inspiring and admirable about CAB as an organization. And, and I know that the organization itself has been doing a lot of Kind of internal work and discussions about, you know, what what equity and and what racial equity in particular mean for the organization and how to uh, live those values and and you know change practices and change habits and I'm wondering if you have any um, thoughts about that or or uh, thoughts you want to share in terms of what's that what that's been like we from actually, an employee perspective. Yeah, we've actually spent a lot of time on trauma informed care. Um, this year um, because it's important to really get the people that we work with and ourselves to deal with those issues that we, you know, we deal with every day. Um, it's, and that's what I mean. It's just the passion that you see out there in the community because the work is not easy. Um, it, it comes from the, doing a good job. It's because you know that you're making an impact on the community and also building awesome collaborations. I love working in Santa Cruz County. It's a, what a great team we all have with all of you, actually. Jesusita, there's a question in the in the chat from Tanner about do workers um, have to be bilingual for all the job openings at CAB? For all of the positions that I mentioned today, uh, they will. On the, uh, the accounting assistant, I believe not, and I can 
confirm that. Uh, I'd have to look at the posting again. Yeah. But for the uh, for that one, um, I don't believe that that's going to be any kind of an issue. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Jesusita. Thank you. So hi everybody, my name is Maria Cadenas. I'm the executive director uh, for Santa Cruz Community Ventures. And I'll just talk a little bit about who we are. I've been working uh, for over 20 years and trying to find ways that create change for our community. And just, um, and so just straight, let's go straight to it. If we can go to the next slide. Um, so Community Ventures has been around since 1989 and we work to build compassionate and equitable local economies that contribute to the region's well-being. Uh, and what that really means is that we help families understand and use their economic power to create thriving communities where zip code, gender, race, immigration status, or age do not dictate and come in wealth. So we are as much a think tank around system change and structural changes that need to happen to create more equitable economies as we are um, doing the work on the ground to implement some of those ideas and efforts. What really guides our work is the idea that everything starts with love, dignity, and respect for people and planet. And that, that assumption is really key to how we do the work that we do. Uh, we believe money and how it is earned and used and implemented to build wealth and financial systems is key to a vibrant society. Um, very much like Nicole shared around the core conditions, everything's interconnected. And we believe money is one of those pieces, but it needs to be focused around justice and love for it to create economies that actually work for everybody. And we strongly believe that the current economy is doing exactly what it was designed to do, which is concentrate wealth and devalue people and planet. Uh, so we need to change the economy to create a better world. And that all our economic systems represent and replicate systemic oppressions, including racism and sexism um, that get augmented over time. Uh, so it's not only about a wealth and income divide, but a, a divide that is augmented through racism and sexism, um, homophobia, et cetera. And, and, and so in order to create a new economy, we believe we start local uh, and that we can understand it better through how we create our, our local models. So when you look at uh, the next slide, this is uh, our program mix, right? Again, we're helping families understand because they need to understand the current system to decide how they want to change it. Um, and then they do that by using their economic power. So very much around the idea of advocacy um, and our programs include UndocuFund Monterey Bay, which was created last year as a rapid response um, to undocumented workers being left out of relief efforts uh, from state and federal governments. Go up a little, one more. I know I'm, I'm going fast, Nicole, but you can go back to, to the slide with the program mix. Um, what's key for us is the idea that love and justice and the idea of equity is really at the center. It guides everything we do. Um, so we have ALAS, which was a program pilot around guaranteed income, uh, working with UndocuFund recipients um, to really provide continuous support and a financial coach for families. Um, SEEDS, which is a program where we're hiring, and I'll go into that position in a second, uh, which is around really intergenerational wealth building, tying together health, education, and financial stability by creating college savings accounts at time of birth for every single baby in the county. Um, and Futuro Cooperative, which is newer, uh, we, this, this is taking place in the Salinas Valley. Uh, we are developing models that encourage entrepreneurship as wealth building for immigrant communities who are usually left out of economic models. Um, and the thread that ties all of this together is what we call Familias Con Mas, which is, is a financial capability model that is really around education um, and, and helping people touch into their own power by understanding basic concepts of the economy and coaching and workshops. So that thread program is uh, evident in every single one of those programs that I just mentioned. If we can go to the next slide. So UndocuFund, like I said, was created to provide relief effort. Um, it started as a one-time relief for people impacted by COVID. Um, and we were able to help close to 3,000 families. And we we're just finishing off a last million dollar distribution. So totals about $4 million of dollars, uh, distributed in the Monterey Bay area to undocumented families. Part of the case management work for this included a continued outreach to the families to check in on them and see how they were doing above and beyond the distribution that we gave them. And right now what we're doing is actually we secure funding to support those that were impacted by the fires. So undocumented people impacted by the fires 
um, will be receiving additional support from us. We're currently hire for case managers, a part-time role for the month of June. This is a, a rapid response that we have an opportunity. We're looking for part-time case managers with experience that can reach out to undocumented families who were impacted by the fires, either by wage loss or home loss and provide them rent and food assistance um, uh, in, in monetary contributions. Uh, we have three positions available, again, part-time starting in June. And I, I, I say, if you're a case manager that needs a little extra money, we need your help <laughs> to reach these families. Um, and then we'll be looking at a, a more full-time position after June into the July through, through the next June period. But for now, we are looking for three to five part-time case managers. The pay rate is $25 an hour. Um, and it's just for the month of June. So if you're interested, the position is on our website. You go, uh, they do need to be bilingual, um, Spanish, but actually if anybody speaks Mixteco in Spanish or Triqui or Zapoteco in Spanish, that would be great as well. Um, next slide. So the most common response that we get from the community around Andaki Fund is, gracias por extendernos la mano para ayudarnos. It just simply, people are saying thanks for seeing them and for being there with them. Um, if we go to the next slide. So Santa Cruz Seeds, um, as I mentioned, is a program that provides a college savings account for all newborns in the county. Uh, it went countywide in January. We had a pilot month, um, pilot year uh, through Watsonville. Right now we have over a thousand babies uh, that have an account um, and we're reaching out to them. Uh, if you go to the next slide, um, Nicole, the goal of Santa Cruz Seeds, there's really three of them. One is to improve childhood development, build expectations for higher education, and build dedicated savings. What this program really does, it, it has um, manifested itself through other models that children with these type of accounts are three times more likely to go to college, four times more likely to graduate, regardless of how much money is in the account. These accounts also help decrease maternal depression and increase the health of the child from zero to five. So it's not just about the money, it's really about the sense of belonging and hope that we can build in our communities. We're very proud of this program. We're only the second program in the entire state that starts our birth. We're the only universal program that starts our birth. Um, so we're, we really are looking for a program manager to help us bring this program to life. Um, the manager will be my right hand person in bringing this uh, idea, this vision to our community, um, helping establish the partnerships with other nonprofits in the zero to five space and just in child education in general and helping with the outreach and education of the parents. If we go to the next slide. And um, I, you know, we do parent educations um, as part of it. And one, and one of these events, one of the moms had her newborn in her arms and she looked down and said, you're going to college. And, and that's the kind of transformation that can happen with something as simple as starting an account for their children in the future. So I'm looking for somebody who cares deeply about the connection of the families that we're moving forward and how we can build a sense of belonging for every single child that is born in our county. Um, that position needs to be uh, bilingual, bicultural will be preferred because um, 50% of our births are actually to monolingual parents. So, um, so that's kind of, or Spanish speaking parents. So we would love somebody who is bilingual, um, but we hire for values and, and alignment around who we care about. And, and so we'll, we're looking for that. Um, next slide. And that's it. I went fast. <laughs> I, what I can say about ventures is like, we're, we're a team oriented um, community. A lot of our staff is partly remote. We don't always all come to the office because the county is big, even though we're small. So everybody has their own roles. Um, we are innovative. So there's always change and opportunity for change. And we're constantly trying to not only focus on the system, but the person, and that includes our own agency. So we're, we're just, for example, we just reviewed our holiday um, pay and we decided it's just a holiday bank. Uh, each employee gets to determine what their holidays are. Um, we're, we're not gonna determine what holidays they should celebrate. So that's an example of, of steps that we take. There's a lot of learning that we do internally to constantly question um, uh, best practices that there might not be as equitable as we thought they were. Um, but that's, that's ventures out. I'll, I'll gladly take any questions either about the program manager for seeds, the case management, or anything about um, us as an employer or as a partner in the community that may be out there. Thanks, Maria. That's such exciting work. 
It's really <laughs> wonderful to see it all flourishing um, and expanding. So bring your questions for, for Maria, either in the chat or um, you can see that Gisela is posting links to ventures. Um, do you have specific questions about any of the, the roles that Maria mentioned or about the organization as a whole? I would, I, I'll just talk until you tell me my time's up. So, yeah. um, uh, and our questions come up. Uh, the Santa Cruz Seeds Program Manager is based in Santa Cruz County. We do want somebody who is local in Santa Cruz County and who knows the community in Santa Cruz County to help us expand and build that program. Uh, the pay for that position is sixty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars a year, in addition to to the medical packages and, and vacation pay. Um, the the case management is actually to serve Santa Cruz County and Monterey counties, so that position um, location is a little more flexible, um, and we expect those hours to be in the evening and weekends uh, in order to reach families that need to be served. The pay for that one, like I said, is twenty-five an hour. And that's 15, 10 to 15 hours a week for the case management roles. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So you can raise your hand using the reactions button. You can pose a question in the chat, try to wave at us. However you wanna get our attention will work. And I see Ashley um, posted some parent center information as well in the chat. So those of you who, who aren't officially presenting but have some, um, some openings, please feel free to follow Ashley's lead and, and let us know in the chat. And so I you just can, wanna- Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, just, you know, in the time that I've known Maria and, you know, I've gotten to know a little bit about Santa Cruz Community Ventures, like these are programs that have like started off as ideas and then all of a sudden became these like, <laughs> you know, established, effective, successful programs. And so just, um, you know, I can only imagine like the energy and the creativity and, and the hustle, right? That, it, that happens within the organization to, um, you know, both launch and start and, and then really, you know, have these programs be uh, deeply established in, in our communities. And so just, you know, Big kudos for that, and for you know any of you that are looking for jobs or know of other people looking for jobs that you know want to be in that kind of environment that's always innovating, always kind of looking for um, you know how to how to again how to really have the programs reflect uh, the people's and organizations' values. I think um, this would be a great place to work. Yes, and we, we really were hoping for exactly that today, that you would get a feel for the kinds of people you'd be working with and the kinds of environments that these organizations represent because everything's different. So that may not be your jam, but if it is, um, this is a great place to be. And I would add that you know, in CORE, we're always looking for ideas from elsewhere. What models can we learn from? And what's really exciting about what Maria just described is other people will be looking to this um, from other counties and other states. As, as Maria mentioned, these are first of, first universal, first, you know, kinds of things. So, so um, innovation can happen anywhere and it's great when it happens here. So we can, um, we can celebrate that as well. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Casey. I'm the HR director at Second Harvest Food Bank. Hopefully everybody knows a little bit about the food bank, but I'll take this opportunity to do a little mini tour through history anyway. Uh, so the food bank was founded in 1972. We are the first food bank in all of California and the second oldest food bank in the entire country. Mm -hmm. uh, we source food from farms, grocery stores, distributors, and individuals, and we distribute it to over 100 food pantries, schools, soup kitchens, group homes, youth centers, and more, as well as 100 of our own nutrition program sites. Uh, more than 60% of the food that we distribute is fresh produce, making us the healthiest food bank in the nation, according to Feeding America, which is our parent organization. Uh, in the before times, <laughs> we typically distributed 8 million pounds of food each year, and that's 55,000 families a month. And data tells us that before the pandemic, one in four children and one in five adults were food insecure in Santa Cruz County. Uh, with the pandemic, those numbers have uh, changed almost overnight. We are now distributing over 10 million pounds of food a year to 75,000 people a month. 
Um, I think the last year or so has shown everybody the reality of how close uh, food insecurity is in our community, how many people are on the edge, how many people found themselves using the food bank for the first time. And the data, uh, our data shows that that increase, increased food need is going to stay over a sustained period of time. We don't see that declining significantly, even as things return to a new normal. So the pandemic has really highlighted the critical role that food banks play in our community. Uh, we have tried to be nimble in changing up how we deliver services to meet the moment. We pivoted to contactless mass food distributions at the fairgrounds and boardwalks and switched to pre-packed food boxes instead of the farmer's market style shopping model that we employed before. But we are also scaling up our programs and our staff to meet uh, the increased sustained need. And that means we're hiring. <laughs> So I wanted to share our specific jobs. Um, before I go into them, though, I did want to um, give a quick um, summary of the benefits because all the positions I'm about to mention are all full time, so 40 hours a week, and they are all benefits eligible. And if anyone has specific questions, uh, come talk to me later because I spend way too much time thinking about our benefits packages. But just the really quick spiel, uh, we think we offer a very competitive PTO package. Your first year, you get 37 paid days off. That's 15 vacation days, 12 sick days, 10 holidays, and then it goes up after your first year. And when you've been here as long as our CEO has, you could just be on vacation all year. So... <laughs> Um, we also offer free dental and vision insurance to our employees, and we split the cost for a dependent 50-50. We offer free life insurance, long-term care, long-term disability, and accidental death and dismemberment insurance. That's the fun one. Uh, we offer shared cost um, for our health insurance, for medical insurance. We cover our prim primary plan at 80% for you and 80% for your dependents, as well as things like retirement plans and employee assistance programs, all that fun stuff. Those, um, all of those benefits, like I said, apply to all the positions I'm about to go through. So if we could go to the next slide. Uh, so the main area that we are uh, looking for um, folks to come on board is in our warehouse, um, because like I said, we're really uh, needing to increase the food that is coming in the door and going back out the door. So we are looking for both warehouse specialists and receiving specialists. So that's helping to unload the food when it comes in trucks um, from donors, ag partners, that's picking and packing orders that go out to our program um, partners, our agencies. Uh, so really we're, we're looking for anyone who just has warehouse experience. If you're forklift certified, great. If not, we can certify you. Um, it's great if you're bilingual, it's not required. But really what we're just hoping for is someone with warehousing experience. And if you have experience working with food and all the fun uh, extra stuff that comes along with that, that's great. Um, our sort room coordinator, that's the person that manages our volunteer sorts that happen in our warehouse. Uh, right now, the National Guard is doing our food sorting, but they're going to be uh, leaving as that program sunsets later this summer. So our sort room co coordinator manages our volunteer groups. Maybe that's a group of 15 folks from Plantronics. Maybe that's a community uh, like, you know, Twin Lakes Church comes with a group. And so you're helping to manage that, make sure that the 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 lines that they're bagging the food uh, bags or boxes on are all set up with food. So again, warehouse position, but more volunteer um, focus there. Being bilingual is necessary for that position since so many of our uh, community members uh, are more comfortable in Spanish. We are desperately looking for drivers. <laughs> if you can drive, we want to talk to you. Uh, we're trying to increase the deliveries that go out into the community. Um, None of our trucks require a specialized license. Um, so, so as long as you have experience driving, say, U-Haul sized trucks, um, come talk to us. Uh, we do really um, hope to have someone who is bilingual, again, working with all of our partner agencies. That's a real plus. Um, and working with food, any experience there, also a plus. And then we are also looking for an inventory manager to help us up-level the uh, increased food donation that is coming in and going back out and trying to make sure we are on top of that. So in this position, we are really looking for someone with um, a good amount of inventory experience, somebody maybe who's worked at Costco or something like that in a big warehouse environment. And again, food experience is a plus, uh, as is being bilingual, but not required in that position. So those are the positions in our warehouse. If you wanna go on to our outreach uh, position, we are looking 
for someone to help us uh, expand our CalFresh, CalFresh outreach. Um, so you can see here, this is our employee, Yasef, who after the fires, we sent her um, out into the areas impacted and she was helping people enroll in emergency uh, food assistance programs. So if you're not familiar with CalFresh, uh, sometimes that's referred to as food stamps. Um, but this position is really going out into the community, talking to people about whether or not they could be eligible for this program. It's a huge benefit to folks. Uh, we would much rather people use their money uh, to pay for rent or medical uh, care instead of on food. And so something like this where people can go into a store, buy the food that is right for them with a card um, that helps them get their CalFresh uh, uh, money is, is really, we see uh, as the the first defense against food insecurity and the, the food bank is really to catch uh, what is not caught by CalFresh. So in that um, position, we're really looking for somebody who's familiar with the community, who understands um, the, the needs of the community and the intricacies of our community, and of course does have to be um, bilingual and we hope bicultural as well. And then in our development team, uh, we are looking for a development marketing manager. Uh, so this is somebody who helps our whole team with event support, but primarily helps us with our holiday food and fun drives. I'm sure you've all seen our barrels around town. It's our uh, biggest uh, event. All the money that gets donated um, through our uh, holiday food drive is turned around and given back to our partner agencies. And so that's really our biggest fundraiser is for them. So this person would be helping with event support, helping with coordinating, you know, th this company over here needs five barrels and they need theirs picked up. So it's, it's really uh, an administrative role, um, someone who's organized uh, and on top of the last minute changes. Uh, being bilingual is wonderful for, the, for this position, not required, but certainly very helpful. Uh, also helpful if you're familiar with our community. And then one last position, um, this is not actually posted yet, but will be posted you know, sometime this week or next. Uh, we are looking for a business analyst in our accounting and IT department. Um, so this is really helping us um, up level our, our internal uh, technology, our data, our reporting, uh, helping set up first time programs or do process improvements for uh, structures that are already there. So you are nerdy about data too, we'd love to talk to you. <laughs> And again, being bilingual, uh, always a bonus, but not required in this particular position. So all of these positions are available at thefoodbank.org slash careers, or you can just email me, hiring at thefoodbank.org, and I'm happy to go into more detail. Um, but those are the positions we have right now, and we do anticipate adding um, several more within the next month, so keep checking out our website. Great. Thank you, Mary. Lots of variety and great to hear some <laughs> history about another another organization to be very proud of. Right, right here at home on the on the Central Coast, um, you're getting some requests for for posters of the job openings that perhaps could be placed in different places, like the Parent Center. Yeah, we do have job flyers for all of these positions. So great, I'm happy to share those. Okay, great. Um, we can send some of those out with a follow up. Great. Yeah. So I'll send those to you. Great. That's probably the efficient way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so lots of variety here. Any questions for Mary um, specifically about these openings or upcoming ones? And we hope if, if these aren't exactly what you're looking for, those of you who are job seekers, um, we hope you'll, you'll have networks that you might want to share these with or know of somebody who might be interested. And likewise, um, organizational partners on the call, your, your networks can really help spread the word about these openings for, for great jobs with, with good wages and benefits. Nicole, can I just say what a, what a pleasure Please. it is to be hiring among such great other nonprofits? <laughs> um, you know, it's just amazing that the care that we take of our community of employees so as employers is just it is a privilege to be among such great partners. So thank you for having us. And and I, I, like Mary, I would say that we've been um, we're also growing. So the jobs today are only the jobs I have for today. But I know that we'll be hiring uh, more in in the fall. So keep your eye open as as we move forward. Yeah, great great sentiments, Maria, and great reminder to keep checking. And and I think um, since this is our first foray into doing something like this, um, maybe we can help with that in the fall to just try and make this a, a regular part of the lineup to 
capture different organizations that people may not be familiar with, um, but also to keep the, the postings going. Nicole, should we open it up to, I know some of the other participants on the call have some job openings they wanted to share. Some of them have put them in the chat, um, but we can also take a few minutes if anybody wants to unmute themselves and do a, a short little pitch for your openings. You know, the Parent Center posted something and Ash from United Way. I don't know if Ash is still on the call. Hi, Nicole, it's Ashley. I can give a little bit of tip here. I did put it in the chat. Thanks for organizing this. This was neat. And it's, I like to hear the agencies that we heard from and what they're hiring. And I also go to, oh, I might be able to post that and get, you know, some people reaching out to those agencies. So that was really good to hear because I, the, the agency that we work with, we work with a, a large population and parents are always looking for jobs. And so um, that was great. So I'm looking forward to getting some flyers that I can put up at the office. So thank you for organizing that. Um, just a little bit about the Parent Center really quickly. I put it in the chat. We are also hiring. Um, we're a nonprofit. We work with um, families and youth um, with open child welfare cases, as well as community-based mental health counseling for children ages 3 to 18. And so we're hiring on a few levels. Um, I did put it in the chat, a mental health therapist, a visitation monitor. We're also looking for a therapist on our adult team, working with parents that open have, child, have open child welfare cases. Um, and so we're just looking to hire um, the right fit for the population that we work with. We've been a nonprofit in our county for close to 40 years. So we've been around a very long time. Um, has been a rough year with COVID, really excited to be coming out of that a little bit. But currently we are um, practicing under all the PPE guidelines, CDC, and all the safety precautions um, providing. We do, ever, we do do all our services in person. We're pretty much moved completely away from virtual when it comes to working with our clients. So that's just a little bit about this. This is Kristen, my cl um, the clinical director. So we work very closely and the two of us run the agency together. Yeah, thank you everybody for what you're doing. We're working together as a team. It's nice just to see some faces with different agencies, nonprofits that I've heard about. And um, yeah, thank you for the work that you're doing to better our community. Thank you. Nice to see you both. Um, Ash, do you wanna say anything about the positions at United Way? Yes, thanks, Nicole. Sorry, my camera doesn't work, so. Uh... Yeah, I would just have to go um, and eat myself. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about like our mission at United Way and that we strive to improve the lives of youth and families in Santa Cruz County by addressing the basic needs of education, health and financial stability. And we currently have two job openings. I put in the chat, it's the Associate Director um, for Development and Marketing. And we also have the Community Impact Coordinator for Homeless Families. And that means um, healthy youth. And so, yeah, our employees, like everyone and our staff, we're really passionate about the work that we're doing, impacting the lives of, you know, youth and families. We're doing a lot of COVID relief, um, COVID relief um, a lot of stuff with like the fire relief as well, helping a lot of people out there. Um, and we really have a diverse and collaborative, hardworking team of professionals that are really striving to, you know, work with the community better and just creating a better community for, for everyone here so yeah if you have any questions um you can go ahead and go to the link um i also have my email on there so thank you so much nicole for and everyone on this panel for letting us you know share these opportunities great thanks for being here ash and for sharing those um, the united way is also one of the core steering committee member agencies so it's nice to have that strong core representation in this uh, particular session today and uh, any, any time and anything that we can do to you know, support the agencies also that are involved with core, we like to be able to do that. Um, any other questions or either if you're a job seeker or you think someone might be interested in one of these positions you've heard about today or anybody else have other job openings that they wanna spread the word about?
Okay, feel free to, if you think of something, go ahead and share it. And then we're gonna uh, start to wrap up. And so Nicole will talk about some upcoming events. Some of them don't have registration links yet, but will soon. And then I'm going to launch a short feedback poll. If you can take a moment to fill that out while we're wrapping up here, that'd be great. Yes, thanks. We really pay attention to your feedback and that's how some of these topics come up and some of the format changes. So please do uh, take a couple minutes to do that. It might be less than a couple minutes actually. Um, we're gonna take a break next week and then we're trying to figure out um, the exact lineup for June 1st, but um, we, we hope to have news about that shortly. But on Tuesday the 8th, we have a really exciting um, youth panel from Food What talking about some really great work they're doing to encourage uh, youth vaccinations, which, as you know, last week got extended to, down to the 12 to 15 year olds for the Pfizer vaccination. And so we're going to be able to answer questions and they'll share some of the really creative, um, as only teens can, kinds of social media things they're doing and the messages they're, they're posting for each other and also the misinformation that they're addressing among their peers. So that'll be a really interesting session and I think a, um, just another way to involve um, people of different ages in our community in these efforts and, and to showcase their talents, which are really amazing. Um, then we'll also have that same week, another in the series of the ACEs Aware Network of Care Learning Sessions. And this one is going to be um, similar to some of what you're learning today about getting to know who, who else is in the network and how to work with each other um, in more effective ways. And so that's... Um, that's what's on deck for the, the Wednesday, June 9th session. And that's in the middle of the day, 11.45 to two. So if you have been attending the ACEs Network of Care sessions since last fall, um, that'll feel familiar to you, but you don't have to have attended prior ones to join in um, and, and learn more about that. So it's an evolving um, initiative in our county and like all these other ones, connected to each other and trying to strengthen the work that we all do for um, achieving health and well-being in our county and throughout the region. So please do join us for either of those. Um, and if you have ideas for us for future topics um, over the summer and into the fall, we welcome those as well. So I really want to thank the the uh, representatives of our three organizations today who took time out of their schedules to share about their own work environments, what they love about where they are, which clearly came through, really nice to see, and also these great opportunities. And as they all mentioned, keep checking. These, these are growing organizations, so there will be more to come. But for now, if you know of anyone who might be a good fit for these particular roles or for the organizations, you have seen some links in the chat, but we'll share those as well afterwards. So you'll have them in one place. And we just really appreciate your being here. So thank you, Hesusita, Maria, and Mary for being with us and all of you for participating and keeping your, your questions and comments going. <laughs>